Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to the very first video series where I go through my same method and tips for each of my IB subjects. And today we will be focusing on psychology. And psychology, I took it at an HL level. And so I really want to do psychology because it's one of my favorite subjects to study for. And I've developed a very systematic approach to studying psychology, which helped me to score nine marks above the boundary for a seven for my May 2021 assessment. Let's get right into the video. So the first thing you have to go through before we focus on any tips and tricks is to know your assessment requirements. And this is so important because knowing your assessment requirements, like how to answer specific questions and what will be assessed will heavily determine the amount of content that you have to commit to memory. Because IB is such a rigorous curriculum, you need literally all the time you have to focus on the subjects that you are weak on. And so it's so important for you to spend your time effectively in studying and study the right way, like study smart, not hard. So in psychology, you have a lot and I mean a lot of things you have to remember. To give you an idea, that's about 50 studies. That's why it's so important for you to be efficient in what you are committing to memory and how you are spending your studying time. So a brief summary on the assessment requirements. For paper one, you will have three essay cues, which is short answer questions, and one ERQ, which is essay response question. For the three essay cues, one would come from each course section. And course section, I mean like BLOA, which is the biological approach, CLOA, which is the cognitive approach, and SLA, which is the social cultural approach. And for essay cues, you have to answer all of the SAQs and on average you have to spend 20 minutes on each SAQ and I would say about 300 to 500 words on each of your SAQ. For your ERQ which is the section B of the paper one, you would be given three ERQs as well, one from each course section. However, you only need to choose one ERQ to respond to and for ERQ you would have to spend approximately 60 minutes on one ERQ and I would say it has to be at least 800 words, so around 800 to 1200 words. So because you are given an option in the ERQ section, in the section B of the paper, you can start to strategize for how you want to answer section B and this will determine what you have to memorize and help your studying session to be more effective. Overall for the assessments, you would need at least one study for each topic because you would need one study to support each of your SAQs and on average at least two studies to support one of your ERQs. I, I've never seen people using two studies on one SAQ but it is possible for people to talk about more than two studies like three or four studies in one ERQ. So with that said, there's two methods of strategizing how you can respond to your cues in your section B. The first one is to choose one section of the core content to focus on. And this means between BLOA, CLOA, and SLA, you'll be choosing one to focus on. This is the strategy that I took, my class all took the strategy. And so all of us chose to focus on CLOA, in which we only study more studies for the CLOA. And we are determined to choose the second question in section B, which will always test us on CLOA. And so what are the benefits of this? The benefits is that if you guys do this as a class, your teacher can have a more focused teaching approach as well. For instance, you won't have to study the BLOA HL topic because if you're determined to do CLOA, you don't have to worry about BLOA HL topic at all because HL topic will only come out as an ERQ and you don't, you don't have to worry about the SLOA um, HL topic as well. And you will only need to know more studies that helps you to support CLOA. So if you can do this, definitely if you really like one core content over the others. And if you want to have a more focused approach, this is a better strategy to take. The downside is that if you do not prepare this carefully, like if you really did miss out on some topics, and if that topic comes out on your exam, you don't have a backup plan. By taking this approach, we were very careful that we touched on every single topic within CLOA, like every single detail, like how the questions will be asked, all the types of command terms. So we were very careful as to like what we were preparing and like what we were studying for. And so far, like for our May 2020 exams, there were no surprises. So this is a valid approach to take. The second approach that I'll be talking about is only applicable to HL students. To take this approach, you basically, among the three HL topics, like BLOA is animal research, CLOA is 
digital cognition and SLOA is globalization within these three, you have to study all of them. And you can do that and ignore like all the other studies that you have to study for the core content because in the psychology guide, they said one essay from a choice of three on the biological, cognitive, and social cultural approaches to behavior. One, two, or all of the essays will reference the additional HL topic. This tells you that among the three ERQs, if you are an HL student, you will definitely get at least one that asks you on HL topic. But my teacher said it's very unlikely that they will give you all HL topics on like all three of the questions for ERQs because you do need to answer ERQs differently than SAQ. If you do prepare only the HL topics for ERQ, you can ignore all the other studies that you have to memorize to prepare yourself for core content ERQ, if that makes any sense. And because I'm so afraid of not explaining this clearly enough, so let's look at an example together. Okay, so I have the November 2020 paper one HL paper with me right now. So let's go through this and I'll give you an example of what I talked previously in this video. So the first question it asks about twinship or kinship study, and this is a BLOA question. The second SAQ asks about one model of memory, and this is a CLOA question. And the third SAQ asks about cultural norms, which is an SLOA question. So you can see one question from each core section. And so let's look into section B, which is and where the strategies come into play. So like the fourth question, which is the first question in section B, uh, asks about animal research. And this is one HL topic. And then for question five, which is second question in section B, asks about uh, the influence on technology on one or more cognitive processes. This is also an HL topic. So for this group, they had two options if you took the second approach. And for question six, it asks about the formation of stereotypes, which is an SLA question, but it's not an HL topic. So if I were to take um, the first approach where I am determined to choose, for example, CLOA, I would have to answer the fifth question here, which is discuss the influence of technology on more and more cognitive processes. That's why I said it's important like that if you take the first approach, you have to study everything, including the HL content. And But if I took the second approach where I only study and prepare the HL content like to write an ERQ, I have two options in this case. So question four or five are both questions that I prepared for. And so if I took like the first approach where I only study CLOA, it's totally fine if I know nothing about animal research and or if I know nothing about stereotype. So that's why like by doing this, you can streamline down what you have to study in order to be able to answer a question on your exam. And just to clarify, it's totally fine if you don't take any of these approaches. But from what I saw on the internet and with teachers, they all mentioned that like it's better if you just have like at least one of the st these strategies. Like you can't have both at the same time. But it's important for you to have these strategies to like reduce the amount of stuff you have to memorize, because or else like your time and effort would just go to waste and there would just be time and effort that you can spend on other of your weaker subjects because imagine you have six subjects to study for so you actually need just every bit of time that you have to like study for all the other subjects and things like that so moving on this is how i study for my psychology exams so for psychology you can literally predict every single possible question that might come up as long as you have the time and effort to prepare how to respond to these questions, you will walk into the exam with full confidence. And this is what I mean. Let's open up the IB Psychology Guide. So starting from page 23, the syllabus is presented in a table format in which the left side tells you the topic and the right side tells you the content. And this guide tells you exactly what you need to know for each subsection. It also tells you how the questions will be framed, which is super helpful because you can know exactly how to respond to each possible type of question that might come up. That's why it's so important for you to look at this. And so if you're too lazy to read through all this, I read through all this because I wanted to make sure I what I did was correct. If you're too lazy to do so, you can go to Semantic Education and just search for their question bank. And I'll link it in the description down below. It's super helpful because the teacher has already read through the requirements and framed and predicted the IB questions based on the requirements like written in the IB guide. So if you just try to answer or just like write an essay outline for all the questions in his question bank, you are fully prepared for your exam. 
what you need to make sure is know how to define key terms. That's very important. And sometimes you do have to just like memorize it and commit it memory. And second, you need to have one study for each topic that because this is very important in terms of helping you to support uh, what you talked about like the theory the model or things like that and the third one just know how to explain and this one just comes along if you like study the content and if you listen in class so I wouldn't worry about the third one because it comes along as long as you have the first two usually so if you have one essay written for every single possible question and you've memorized it well enough when you walk into the exam room you just need to sit down read the question carefully this is important too and just regurgitate what you memorize onto a paper you don't even have to think about like which study should i use no you have to think about that before you walk into the exam just have everything prepared before you walk into your exams please <laughs> So in part of studying uh, for my IB exams, I've actually written an essay, a full-on essay for all the possible type of questions that might come up. And so I want to share that with you guys because I've updated this like question like bank of mine throughout my IB journey and I think it might be helpful to some of you out there if you don't know how to write a very good essay key or your key or you don't know what studies to you. But please note that a lot of the stuff in this document is copy and pasted from other uh, websites. So this includes, for example, In Thinking, Oxford Textbook, Cognity, IB Psych Matters, and like all the possible like websites I, I can find. So, so not all of this is original. I did write some of them, but because to save time, I just copy and pasted some of the others from pre-written uh, places like, you know, textbook and things like that. And I might have like changed the wording a bit to make me feel more comfortable in memorizing it. So this is not my original work. I've just compiled notes from various sources and copy and paste it into a single place. Yeah, just to make that clarification because I'm not like selling anything here. I just hope this can help anyone out there. The next thing I want to talk about is choosing your studies. As I said, SAQ, one study for each, ERQ, at least two studies. And this is so important as well because it will affect the entirety of your essay. Like it will, it will affect how you explain things. If you chose the wrong study, you're doomed basically. So for example, if the question asks about neurotransmitter, you start talking about hormones, that's immediately like a mid lower mark band because you chose the wrong study to, ex to answer like that question a lot of texts will already organize on like which studies you can use for each topic and usually like you know all the common like type of textbooks so like for example oxford in thinking um pearson textbook cognity like they've all had this organized for you so like don't go and look for some weird looking studies online and thinking that it would support the topic like just no like just follow your textbooks and usually there's no problem with it and so there, other than that, there are some studies that touch on multiple syllabus topics, meaning you can use the same study in answering different questions. Definitely, please hold on to these studies because like by having one stu study that's like multi-purpose, you just don't have that much studies to memorize anymore. To provide some examples, the most common one that I know is like HM it's a case study on him and so I have to cite Corkin at all for that study and so for this specific study you can use it on like four or five topics localization multi-store memory working memory model uh, ethical consideration research methods that's like five different topics so please memorize the studies and look for more of these studies sometimes there's two suitable studies but you can evaluate and choose one study over another so for example in answering neuroplasticity i chose draganski at all which is the one about juggling over maguire at all which is i think most people use maguire uh, which is on the london taxi drivers one and the reason is that they both address neuroplasticity but draganski addresses both neural pruning and neural network while maguire doesn't address neural pruning but only neural network and neuroplasticity. Um, so you could have just memorized Dragansky instead of memorizing both Dragansky and McGuire. So just be very careful in which studies you choose and just making sure that it does answer your question. The other thing is that also choose studies that are more commonly used that you see often in mark schemes because it makes it easier for examiners to mark your essay if you use a study that's commonly used. If you use like very rare studies, they will actually have to search online to make sure what you wrote is correct. So if they know the study well, you actually have a benefit. This is what my examiner teacher said.
Another aspect that helps you score well in your psychology overall grade is your IA. With the reduction in the assessment for May 2020 due to COVID, our IA actually takes up 30% of our grade. That's actually more than our paper two, which is 20 or 25%. And I find that insane. This shows how important your IA is. And I guess it's also important in terms of developing your skills to be actually like a professional experimental psychologist if you do study that in university. And for psychology IA, I also think it's one of the easiest IA for you to work on. You just have to replicate an existing study and all the research question, procedure, findings, like pre-existing findings are already there for you. Definitely spend time on it and make sure you do get a grade because it weighs 30% of your overall grade. And actually, a lot of the skills involved in writing your psychology IA are skills that you've developed in practicing paper once and two. So I will actually make a separate video on my IA because it's super long, like it's like 2200 words. And then I will share it to you guys when I get my detailed results on like, you know, how much I got exactly on my IA and things like that. And speaking of IAs, I actually plan to do a live stream to provide general advice and like feedback on IAs for any IB students out there, like whether you're IB1 student or whether you're in the process of like brainstorming a topic. But I will only do that when I reach 100 subscribers because because I want to make sure there's enough people in the live stream. So please do me a favor and do subscribe to my channel because I will be making a bunch of videos on IB on like how I got sevens in each subject and sharing my IAs. And I promise that I'm committed to this channel. So please do subscribe to my channel. It will help my channel grow a lot. And I really wish to be able to reach out to more people and help more IB students out there. So now I'm going to talk about some of the small and general like other tips that I implemented when I was like choosing studies and like studying. The first one I talk I want to talk about is like choose studies that make sense to you. And what I mean is that uh, studies that follow your logical flow, if that makes any sense. Because sometimes like I don't remember exactly what the outcome of the study is. I just ask myself the question, uh, what would the findings of the study be that would help me support this question? Help me like um, support this theory or help, help me counter argue this theory. And I know this is not good if you're like writing or EE or anything, but this is just a method I use to memorize the studies because if they do follow your logical flow, it's so much easier to commit it to memory. So for example, if I want to show the existence of anchoring bias, I want to show that a definitely a high anchor would lead to a higher estimation and a low anchor would lead to a lower estimation. So if you really don't remember any of the numerical values, you can just say, oh, the average estimation in the high anchor group is higher than the average estimation in the low anchor group. And that is probably correct because if you chose like, for example, I chose truck and Mosweiler to answer um, like cognitive bias questions. There's a reason why you chose this study and you chose the study because it helps you support that theory. So if you just implement your logical thinking like backwards, like you can sort of like just deduce what the findings of the uh, study might be. And this is super helpful when you really just like blank out, you don't remember like the findings of the study. And this, this is something that you can do. And my teacher also said, if you want to achieve the top mark bands, Details are super important too, but like definitely don't force yourself into memorizing every single detail, but it's good to have some of them. So for example, with the Struck and Musweiler study, this is actually the study I did on my eye, so that's why I remember it so well. And the Struck and Musweiler um, study, for example, you can easily say, oh, the average estimation in the high anchor group is higher than that of the lower anchor group. But to improve this like, sentence a bit more and prove this essay you can say that uh, you if you do remember the numerical values you can say the high the average estimation of the high anger group is 67 years old while the average estimation in the low anger group is 50 years old and the actual age of gandhi's death age is actually 78 years old so if you do say something like that it does add a lot of like good impression um just leave more good impression like to the examiners but then it's not in the mark scheme where it says that you need a lot of detail. So this entirely depends on you. So if you remember, put it down. If you don't, it's okay. It won't like put you in the middle or low mark band. And the last tip is something I do, not daily, but like often was I just like describe 
studies to my friends and family for fun because a lot of people are interested in psychology so sometimes I just walk around school and when I'm seeing my friends I'm like are you interested in knowing a study about neurotransmitter and I just start like explaining it to people so I found like vocalizing on my thoughts and like my explanations really do help me to like prepare for what I will write in my exams so this is something you can do like as a habit if you do a bit of it every day I promise you it will help you and it, it will give you a lot more confidence when you walk into your exam room knowing that you've prepared this for so long and knowing that you're fully prepared so that's all the tips I have for getting in 7 in IB psychology I hope you guys found this video helpful um, be sure to subscribe as I'll be posting every Thursday and Monday this month to complete my IB video series and I would give free access to all of my IAs that have been submitted to IB and which I have received the actual grades to provide you guys reference. So thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.